Hey guys, what's going on? We're Sunday morning again. I am excited and so happy to have you back with us this Sunday morning. If you've been with us, we've been jumping in to Scripture and to specifically the Gospels, studying through Jesus, who He is, what He's done for us, what that means for our lives right now in 2020 for these past few months. We're excited to have you with us. If you're comfortable being here in person, wearing a mask in Sunday school, we'd love to have you. We'd love to have you back with us as well. But if not, no worries. I'm still here. I'm still coming to you every Sunday morning, and I'm excited to do it. I love being able to open the Word of God with you guys and studying that way. If you remember, do not forget Be here Sunday nights, 5.30 p.m. The gathering is happening. You do not want to miss out, no matter what. You do not want to miss out. We want you here. You belong here. You are loved here. It's a safe place for you to come and just, man, enjoy. Have a great time with friends. Worship Jesus and learn more about who he is. Um, So I hope to see you tonight, 5.30 p.m. in here in the worship center. We're amped and we're excited to see you guys. Last week, if you remember, man, Jesus was riding into the city of Jerusalem. Right? And he actually came into the city of Jerusalem in the third setting. And we talked about how there was three different change in the scenes, like where he was. And there was two really different changes in the atmosphere and and what was going on. And in that first Seen as he was riding down the path of the Mount of Olives, man, Jesus was telling us what was going on that on a daily basis we should be rejoicing and we should praise. We should be rejoicing and we should be praising him. And that second change in scene, man, Jesus was looking upon the city of Jerusalem just in sorrow and brokenness and, and sadness and weeping, it says, man, for the, his people who did not believe in him and did not know him as Savior, as King, as Messiah, as fully God and fully man. And, and he tells us that we should sincerely feel, sincerely feel, man, this weight. As we look around and we see people, see our friends, see our peers, see our family who don't know Jesus as their Savior. And then the atmosphere changes again and Jesus goes in the temple and just the righteousness and this intensity comes out of Jesus because they've made his temple this house of thieves this den of thieves they're they're stealing from people by creating a marketplace inside this area called the courtyard of the Gentiles and just gouging people for the price of animals to sacrifice and you remember in 1 Corinthians 3 we're told as believers as Christians that our bodies are a living temple that the Holy Spirit resides in us. And then the question comes, is is this, are we coming faithfully to the Lord on a daily basis in worship and in prayer, coming to Him, knowing that our bodies are holy? This week, we're jumping in, and we are in the book of Mark. You can open up Mark chapter 12. And what's going on here is this is the week leading up to Passover. And so really it's the week leading up to Jesus' death. So Jesus is in Jerusalem. And what happens is once again, once again, Jesus is going to be interacting with some different people. Um, asking him questions, things like that. Like that. And we see Jesus answers these questions and tells us, man, how we should be living on a daily basis. He applies it for us. Have you ever been just like impressed with a teacher? Maybe it's a school teacher. Maybe it's a teacher outside of school. And you've just been impressed um, with them. I remember I had this kindergarten teacher. Her name's Mrs. Moore. 
and I just loved her. She was just phenomenal. Primarily because she always left this sense of wonderment. To know that like there's more to the teaching, to push us to want to know more, to want to grow, to want to understand, to want to learn, to want to be excited about being at school and being there. Like there's, there's always more. And she did it with such great joy and great love. Like I remember being this little five and six year old boy and it was just straight joy to be able to walk to the very back of the school where the kindergarten wing was and get to walk into class each day knowing that I had a teacher who cared deeply about me, who loved me well and who pushed me, who pushed me daily to remember what being there was about and that I got to learn and just, just be there. It's exciting. Well, Jesus here, in each of these moments, we see three things, man. We get to see that, know that there is more. Two, love well. And three, remember, man, remember who Jesus is. So you got your Bibles open there. It should be to Mark chapter 12. Read along with me beginning in verse 19. Beginning verse 19. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife behind but no child, that man should take the wife and raise up offspring for his brother. There were seven brothers. The first married a woman and dying left no offspring. The second also took her and he died, leaving no offspring. And the third likewise. None of the seven left offspring. Last of all, the woman dies too. In the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife will she be since the seven had married her? Jesus spoke to them. Isn't this the reason why you are mistaken? You do not know the scriptures or the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have not you read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the burning bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Jacob and the God of Isaac. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. Badly mistaken. Notice in verse 18 here, which we did not read, who's talking to him. It's these people called the Sadducees. So there's two really large religious sects of the Jews, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So you have these Sadducees, and these are the aristocrats. They're really wealthy individuals, and they kind of held to some different religious beliefs. So they only believed that the first five books of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, they believed that those were the only books of the Bible, honestly. That was the only word of God. The rest of the Old Testament, the law, the, excuse me, the wisdom literature and the prophets, those were not part of the Bible. It's one, two. And so what Jesus, it's very, it's very telling because Jesus hammers on both of these two major things that they believe. And two, they don't believe in any sort of afterlife. They believe that when you're dead, you're dead. And so notice, when I say that, you've got to be thinking, so why did they even ask Jesus this question? Right? Like, why did they even ask him this question? Well, you've got to remember who Jesus is specifically during this time. He's this man who's proclaiming great truth, who's baptizing people, who has crowds following him, who's expounding upon the teachings of the Old Testament. Who people really recognize as being more than just a man, but the Sadducees and Pharisees also fear that because they have control and they don't want to give it up. And so what the Sadducees are doing here is they're honestly trying to trap Jesus. 
trying to trap him, trying to get him to say something that is not biblical, that's not real, that's not true. And he does not. Notice that. Jesus is perfect. He does not. And what Jesus tells them, honestly, is this, man. There is more to life. Know that there is more than just your earthly life. He says, know that there is more than just your earthly life. Life And Jesus pushes the Sadducees to look at him in a different light and to know him as Savior. He says this, you're mistaken. One, you do not know the scriptures. So he's telling them, man, what you're telling me right now is this. You have no cognizance of the scriptures. That there's more to it than just the first five books of the Old Testament, our Old Testament. There's more to it than just that. And you know that, but you don't believe it. And then he kind of goes in on them on the fact that there is more to life than just earth. And we should take that seriously. And that means that we, that should impact the rest of our life. How we interact with people, knowing that, man, when they died, you're either going to heaven or hell. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, it's not heaven that you're going to. That should impact how we live, how we act, how we think, how we talk to people, how we love people. And then he takes and he uses Scripture. He specifically uses Scripture. Remember, he says, at the burning bush, Exodus Moses is at the burning bush, Exodus chapter 3, as we see him say here in, in verse 26, that God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Because he talks to Moses through this burning bush, and he tells him that he's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, dudes who have been physically dead for a long time. And if he is their God, then that means he's not a God of the dead, but of the living. Do you know that there is more to life than just the here and the now, like right now? That there's more to it? And is it impacting what you're doing? Man, Kimmy and I were down at the beach a little while ago, and we were doing a puzzle. Love doing puzzles at the beach. I couldn't find this one piece. Like, I, I knew that there was more to this puzzle, right? Honestly, because I could see that there's this shape that I was missing. And I was looking at the box, and I was like, man, it looks like this. Like, where's it at? Come to find out, you know, I just took my hand, and I, I rubbed it against the puzzle. I rubbed it against the puzzle. And that little piece had blended in on top of the puzzle. So I was looking for this puzzle piece everywhere, knowing that there is more. Caring deeply, wanting to run the race well and finish well. And I just couldn't find it, and I finally found it, and it was such a great joy. The Sadducees, they were pressing the truth that there is more to life than just right now. And that there is an eternity to come with God or in separation from Him. And then notice this second part, beginning in verse 28. One of the scribes approached. When he heard them debating and saw that Jesus answered them well, the Sadducees, he asked him, which command is the most important of all? Jesus answered, the most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. All four. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other great commandment. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have correctly said that he is one and there is no one else except him. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength. 
and to love your neighbor as yourself is far more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Notice this, and no one dared to question him any longer. And so the scribes, who are the scribes? So remember, you have the Sadducees and the Pharisees. You had the Pharisees, very religious, larger religious sect, had a little bit more authority. The scribes were specific guys, a part of the Pharisees, who studied specifically the laws found in the Old Testament that governed life. And so we have this guy come, and normally these guys were just probably arrogant and intense. But this guy is pretty respectful of Jesus. And he comes to him to question. And notice what we see Jesus answering this great command with. What is the great commandment? Jesus answers the Shema, which is Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. This is how you should love him. And then he adds in Leviticus chapter 19. Others as well. Love God, love others. Why? What Jesus is saying here is this, man, that the sacrificial system, the sacrificial system is done for. And that Jesus himself is the sacrifice. And that we are told in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, that God first loved us in this, that he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. Ask yourself this. Jesus is telling the scribe and asking the scribe and pushing into the scribe this question. Man, do you love God well? And do you love people well? Jesus tells the scribe that he's not far from the kingdom of God because of this. He's really questioning this scribe specifically and asking him who he believes Jesus actually is. Does the scribe truly believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that He's the Son of Man, that He's the Savior of the world? If He does, then He's there. If He doesn't, then He's still a little bit off. My question for you is this. To truly love God well, and to love people well, you first and foremost have to have a relationship with Jesus. You have to have confessed and believed in Him and have a relationship with Him. But then after that, after you've confessed and believed in Jesus, that He's the Savior, that He's fully God, fully man, that He died on the cross for your sins, that if you confess and believe in Him and repent of your sins and turn away from Him, you shall be saved is what we are told. You, you might ask, Andrew, what's next? And my question for you is this, are you loving God well and are you loving people well? You might say, Andrew, what does that look like? Are you all in with your heart, with your soul, with your mind, with your strength in pursuing Jesus? And then the other one's pretty easy, man. Love your neighbor as yourself. And do you love people as you would love yourself? Do you think the thoughts about other people that you would think about yourself? Do you talk to other people in a way that is uplifting and encouraging and caring in a way that you would talk to yourself? Man, I think about sweet baby Tate. And Tate just turned one a couple weeks ago. And it's been a whirlwind of a year. Crazy COVID has just been a crazy year to see little Tate grow up and get big. And every time I get to spend with him and care for him and be with him, and I know that he's my little boy. And Kimberly's us too. And Kimberly and I catch us finding ourselves saying so much, we just love you so much, baby Tate. We just love you so much. 
even when he's not there, even when we're just looking in the monitor at him as he's sleeping and as we spend time praying over him and for him, we just get reminded that we love him so much. Because we've been given this great joy and this great blessing and this responsibility and this privilege to serve him and care for him and love him and see him through the easy moments and the hard moments by our great God. And oftentimes I find myself, I love you so much, baby Tate, that my attention gets turned back to just that, that great joy and that responsibility given to us by God himself. I remember myself proclaiming and saying, Father, I just love you so much. I thank you for this. And do you love well? And number three, remember who Jesus is. Verse 35, while Jesus was teaching in the temple, he asked, how can the scribes say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself says by the Holy Spirit, the Lord declared to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then, and by him, Jesus is talking about the Messiah, how then can he be his son? And a large crowd was listening to him with delight, with delight. What Jesus is saying here is this. Do you remember who Jesus is? He is the Messiah. This takes the week before Passover. So people are coming in from all around. And they're all wanting to see. They've heard about Jesus and they've heard the rumors that he might be the Messiah. And that they're expecting him to possibly overturn this Roman authority and take the throne and, and bring all of Israel back together. And he's going to be this great earthly Messiah. And Jesus then questions them and says this, though. He says, how can David, how can this Messiah be the son of David, but also David's Lord? And really what he was getting at home here is this, man, remember who Jesus is? Like, who do you see Jesus as being? Is he just your genie to grant your ever-loving desire and to bless you and to give you great wealth and health? Or like the Jews here, do they see this Jesus as only being an earthly Messiah, basically person like them, who's coming to flip the tables on the government and be for them. And Jesus says, nope. He says, I'm both this earthly Messiah because I am a human being, but I'm not this earthly Messiah who you think I am. I'm actually going to sacrifice my life for you. And I'm a heavenly Messiah. Meaning this, I am more. Jesus is better. Ask yourself this, fill in this blank. Jesus is blank. Who is Jesus? Not in some postmodern way of who is Jesus to you. No, who really is Jesus? And do you see him as this, as savior, as friend, as the one who's sitting at the right hand throne of God right now as I'm talking to you, as you're reading your Bible, as you're listening with me. And he's interceding on the behalf of believers across this entire globe right now. That's who he is. That he's Savior King and that he's coming again. That he's the beginning and the end. That he is the Son of the Trinity. Trinity. That's who Jesus is. And I, I was in a situation a few weeks ago and just some craziness had happened in some people's lives that I knew. 
And I just found myself in that very moment, just stopped. I just stopped where I was and I just prayed for him. And my heart was hurting for them. Because they didn't ask for the situation that they got put into. It just happened. It was just a hard one. There's just so many unknowns that had come with it. Not knowing what the next day would look like for them. And I found myself just, just praying for them. Man, Jesus be with them. Provide them peace. Provide them comfort. Provide healing. Because that's who Jesus is. Jesus is Savior King. He is God who loves us, who cares us, for us, and is there for us, who we can come to. So remember this week, as you jump in, as you're reading through Scripture, as you're going back through, man, know that there is more. Love well. And number three, number three, remember who Jesus is. Love you guys. Praying for you this week. If you need me, just give me a shout. Text me, email me, call me. I'm here for you. I'll see you later.